That about wraps it up here, but coming up next is our Channel 10 exclusive on the intersection of politics and hip hop. For Channel 10, I'm Lisa Mulligan. As, as far as having a rapper or, or somebody in the industry as president, I don't think this is gonna I don't think it's gonna happen. It's a very bad concept to a lot of people because I mean people have bad ideas of hip hop. If a rapper ever wanted to be elected president, um, they would probably need to make sure that their whole repertoire in the past has been clean. <laughs> Never been in no trouble. First of all, not enough people support rap. She might get 25% of the people at most. I don't think that the world will ever agree with having a person in the industry as a person in power, as president. Because people people categorize people. And if you're in the industry, then they're going to categorize you as a person that's in the industry. You're not in politics, you're in the industry. If anyone comes out and actually is able to demonstrate a knowledge of issues and ability to speak about them. That's all it would take for me. I think they, there's no reason that that person shouldn't at least be considered for political office. Jay-Z is close. I can remember last year going to a Jay-Z concert and basically at the end of his concert he had a row of lights with a picture of Barack Obama and it was basically supporting him. I told Jay-Z the other day, uh, our lives are, are parallel a little bit. Uh, I think Lupe Fiasco might make a really good president. I think it's possible that he could be great. I really don't care, <laughs> as long as he's doing what he needs to do. It's fun, it's nice. Hey, we all need some hip-hop <laughs> to lift us up. <laughs> yeah. The White House called me uh, tonight uh, because uh, I'm actually working on a hip-hop album. Uh, it's a concept album about the life of someone I think embodies hip-hop, Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Um, he, was, uh, he was born a, a penniless orphan uh, in St. Croix of illegitimate birth, um, became George Washington's right-hand man, uh, became Treasury Secretary, caught beef with every other founding father, uh, and all on the strength of his writing. I think he embodies uh, the word's ability to make a difference. Uh, Tell me a little bit about what it was like making that transition. You know, given my background, I've always been real good at playing the game. Now, truth be told, this whole thing really just becomes a big popularity contest. Now, I don't feel good saying that, but it's the truth. I mean, that's the way it is. You, you're on stage, you're feeding into the energy, you're working the crowd, you're feeding into the hype, and you're trying to create a brand or, you know, create an idea for others around America the words you say. The now, you're on stage with your mic, and it's just you, sometimes boasting without even seeming like you're boasting. Here's the record. We cut the deficit four years in a row for the first time since before the Civil War. I mean, before... <clears throat> World War II, and maybe before the Civil War too. <laughs> We've got you're ten taking that energy of the words from your opponent and you're ripping them to shreds and flipping it on them, as we would say. If that's one of your successes, I wouldn't speak about it too loudly. We've got declining crime rates, two million fewer people on welfare rolls before welfare reform passed, and a 50% increase in child support. That's your record. It's your record in Arkansas, the biggest tax increase in history, biggest crime increase in history, biggest drug increase in history in Arkansas. I just took these skills as an MC, and I used them to enhance my own game. And from there, it seemed like a just natural transition straight into political banter. Let me just mention, uh, Senator Dole voted for $900 billion in tax increases. His running mate, Jack Kemp, once said that Bob Dole never met a tax he didn't hike. <laughs> I will try to make this campaign and this debate one of ideas, not insults. Well, I've, I've been meeting with all kinds of people around the country, business people, factory workers, plumbers, teachers, people from all walks of life, and I, I keep hearing the same thing. You know, people are hungry for change. And I think, 
I think I'm the one that can deliver it. Well, as you know, the Center Party will not be participating in today's debate. In fact, the organization is so young, it was created just a few days after details for this debate were finalized. Now, I spoke with the candidate for the Center Party, Doug Barry, and he informed me they'll be holding an event in just a few weeks, and they hope that uh, voters will come out and see them then. Now, I've spoken to some difficult rooms in the past. Not everybody has liked what I had to say, but I've always listened to their concerns, and when they made good points, I considered them. My opponent is not a listener. Senator Dumfries, the statements you have just made are simply not accurate. Study after study and analyst after analyst have come to the same conclusion. Yet you continue to propose them. I believe it was President Coolidge who once said, I have never been hurt by what I have not said. My opponent would be well advised to take that to heart. The reason why I am standing at this podium today is because I am a leader. People have voted for me supported me, put their faith in me. Because of the consistency of my message, we need to invest in education. We need to invest in the future. We need to strengthen national defense, stimulate the economy from the inside, and get America moving again. One of us, Senator Dietrich, is going to be president for the next four years. It's a big responsibility. Voters need to ask themselves, do we want someone with a clarity of purpose and with a record that reflects that? Or do we want someone untested and unproven, a chronic flip-flopper with a record of poor performance? That is the essential question. That brings us to closing remarks. Senator Dietrich, you're first. Thank you, Alex. Thanks to the Debate Commission, everybody watching tonight, and thanks to Senator Dumfries for sharing the stage with me. You know, Senator Dumfries is very charismatic. He's very animated. He's a good politician. Good politicians have a way of playing to their strengths, of bringing things around to their point of view. What my opponent calls consistency of message, I call stagnation. What my opponent calls flip-flopping, I call changing my mind after careful reflection. It's my opinion that if you can't change your mind, you don't deserve to have one. What you've just said, Senator Dumfries, is something I've been hearing you say for years, often in the exact same words. On the campaign trail, I've been meeting people all around the country. Business people, factory workers, teachers, plumbers, people from all walks of life who agree. They are hungry for change. And if you vote for me, we can achieve it. Thank you. Senator Dumfries, your closing remarks? Thank you. Thank you, City Courthouse, for hosting us. And thank you, the American people, for tuning in. What we need is leadership. Leadership in Washington to get the job done. Leadership capable of staying the course through difficult times. Leadership that ensures every American the freedoms and opportunities that we all hold so dear. <laughs> Senator Dietrich is right. I have never wavered. Thank you for highlighting that, sir. I am committed to keeping education strong, to keeping national defense robust, to improving our economy, and to keeping America the greatest nation on earth. Thank you. We'll have another half hour. Thanks to the candidate. We've received a number of your reactions from Facebook and Twitter. And now we're going to kick it over to Lisa Mulligan, who's taking some reactions from the street. Yeah, Bob, there's a lot of excitement outside the courthouse today, where we've actually stumbled upon a small gathering of people. We've pulled aside a few citizens to get their thoughts on today's debate. Four more years! Four more years! What's up, Four more years! Four more years! I don't even really.
really care for either of these dudes. I mean, Dumfries, Dumfries, whatever his name is, I guess he was good. But really, I'm here for Mr. Prez. Who's this Mr. Prez that you're referring to? You don't know Mr. Prez. He's the one that's gonna legalize that Doja. Hi, and what's your name? Kathy Allen, with an A. And who do you think won today's debate? What debate? The debate between Senator Dietrich and Senator Dumfries. Are they with Mr. Prez? Maybe we should go see what this Mr. Prez is all about. Loud man, I'm the loudest. Red, 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 red. Now, this is what I call a political party. Oh, the news is here. Get that camera over here. So you're Mr. Prez, I take it? You take it right, baby. I'm Mr. Prez, people do what I says. And my album dropping November 6th. Go cop that. So what are you and your um people doing here today? Well, we came to debate, but they ain't trying to let us up in there. They know Mr. Prez gonna make it rain in there. Money in the air, girls on the ground. I don't know about you, but we came to get down. Money in the air, girls on the ground. I don't know about you, but we came to get down. So you're running for president? Look, shorty. I'm already president of the hood, you know what I'm saying? Rich boy stacking all that bread. Shorty, stay gawking. So I'm curious, what's your message to the American people? Look, Senator Dietrich, Detrick, Senator Dito and Dumbo, they don't know what's up. The people know what's up. Real like prayers, four more years. You looking fine, Miss News Lady. Let's go get us some beer. Well, there you have it. The story of today's debate was not one of Dietrich or Dumfries. It was one of Mr. Prez. Thank you, Lisa. The Dow Jones dropped today 50 points, bringing the national average the to... The Sorry, folks. It looks like we're experiencing a little technical difficulty. There we go. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped again 50 points to bring... Wisdom seeps from the depths of my third eye. Can't comprehend, then you're bound to die. Lost in a fake race, paced at a slow rate. Those that pose fake were great, so stay awake. Mm -hmm. Presidential debates, another show for the media mm -hmm. off screen. You better off with blind men leading your mm -hmm. feet and your nonsense to persuade your vote. It's all the joke. Politically, they got us by the throat. They got two dudes in there speaking on the mic, trying to be the best. Yo, it's almost like mm -hmm. what we do on the street. Verbal spells, they need your vote to blow up, man. We do it for ourselves. Got the power, and I'm about this. You know, we about this life, so yo, my man, step in the cipher and join this here jam. Yo, I'm sending you a link right now. Yeah, you're gonna love this. Yeah, check your email. Alright. I'm going here, out here today. Listen to me doing this the wordplay. Listen to what I say. I get on the mic and I'm jam tossing them C's off me like I am the greatest ever. No, maybe not. Maybe so. I don't know, but I'ma go so professional. Let them know. Let them know. Real. When we do it straight in the cypher Now we got three MCs, we can get hyper uh, Like it's life or death, this situation yeah. Keep it going on like this with the frustration Concentration, focus and energy We bring it through the energy and inner side of me When we come through with the lyrical skill This freestyle off the top of the dome You know the deal we are.